Okay, I think we're I think we're good. Let me check something. What the heck? Oh, there we go. Um Okay, yeah, okay, we're good. So, there's no set age to be a mod, I don't think. I guess at least 14, you'd have to be at least 14. But even then, that's not enough. For you to be a mod, you'd have to like spend enough time on the channel before I, th before I make you a mod. It's not something that I just hand over simply because uh, you're a certain age. And plus, I, I, I'm already, I'm pretty good on mods right now anyway, but we'll see, we'll see, anyway, but yeah, more DreamWorks, yay, but hi Maple, Marcy, anyone else who's watching, hi, what's up, my name is Over 15 for those of you who don't already know, and today we are going to talk about more DreamWorks movies, so let's see, B-movie, Over the Hedge, Flushed Away, and Home. We're going to talk about those for today. Um, what else was I going to say? Uh, never mind. But, yeah. So, yeah, we're just going to cover these four. And then next time we're going to cover four more movies, which are... The Rise of Guardians, Monsters vs. Aliens, uh, I forgot what the third one was, shit. Oh, Megamind and The Bad Guys. So we'll cover those four next time, but for now we'll focus on these four movies. And I think that'll be it for the DreamWorks movies, I don't feel like watching any others. I know that there are others out there, I just don't care to watch them. But yeah, let's talk about the chronology. Oh, Josh. Okay, we'll call. I'll call you Josh. But yeah, let's talk about the film chronology. So, Over the Hedge and Flushed Away came out uh, in two thousand six. So they came out uh, within months of each other, and the B movie came out a year later, and then Home came out eight years later in twenty fifteen. So that's the timeline of the films. And there are, I believe there's a series for Home, I think, and there might be, I don't know if there are series for the other films, nor do I care to look them, look, I, I don't care to look that, look, look it, look it up, but I know that there's a series for Home, which I don't care about. I, I just don't care about most DreamWorks series. I, I feel like DreamWorks should stop trying to make a series out of, like, almost every single movie they have. Like, stop just stop but i mean i'm not saying they're all terrible because i've really only watched like one the penguins in madagascar that's the only one i care about i try like i i just i couldn't get into kung fu panda that that one actually that one has three series none of which i care about and there are other series i, I don't care about either but anyway i digress but yeah this is the film chronology Okay, so let's start with the B movie. Okay, so someone somewhere uh, at DreamWorks Studios, or whatever they're called, at DreamWorks, thought that, that you know, a bee having a relationship with a human not even just like a friendship, but also a romantic relationship. Somehow, some someone somewhere thought that that would make for an entertaining film, and did it? Uh, well, uh, no, 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I just don't like this movie. I, I don't like the B movie. I, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't. I just don't. Like, I barely cared for the game. So I, th so I was like, I'm probably not going to like the movie either. And sure enough, I wasn't wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just don't. I just don't like this movie. Um, I don't hate it, but I don't like it either. It's just... I just find it very basic. So basic. <laughs> the meme movie, basically. It's it's like this movie is just it's just it's I don't know how to describe it. It's just a very stupid movie. It's very, very stupid. It I think that's the best word to describe it. Stupid. And not in a good way, not in a not in a, oh my god, it's so silly, you're just gonna laugh kind of way. It's just, it's just so silly that you have to wonder what the writers were on when they made the story. So, <laughs> okay, um, hmm. But yeah, the movie's about this fucking D named Barry Benson. Who, who... Like it's I don't know how to describe this movie. So he 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 forms he he wants he's tired of living the life of a bee. So he decides to go out into the real world and interact with humans. Well, not necessarily interact with humans, but he does end up interacting with one, several. But there's the one in particular that he's take that he takes a liking to named Vanessa, who's dumb as fuck by the way. But I'll get to that later. Um. So, so like the two, the two become friends, and then later, while they're out like in the city talking and shopping, Barry finds out that the human that he that the humans are selling honey, and he's pissed about that, and he goes and investigates and finds that the humans are, the humans of the city, I mean, are um. They're, they're, um, forcing bees. They, they have so many bees trapped in these hives, these, these, these constructed hives, and then they use smoke to calm the bees down and then extract their honey. And, 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 you know, and this is the dumbest part of the movie. I'm not even joking. The fucking bee character, Barry Benson, he actually, he actually sues the fucking company that's harvesting the honey he sues them he sues them he literally goes to court and sues them and Vanessa helps him because why not even though at first like when Barry found when Barry finds out that uh that humans are selling honey. She's like, it's just honey. I don't see what the problem is. I guess off screen, he, she decided, you know what? We should go to court or whatever. And uh, it's stupid. And he wins the case. Not like there, there were moments where he almost lost the case, but he, 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 he actually wins the case. Much to the much to the surprise of the defendant, the, the leader of the company, who actually does make a few good points, but Barry Benson somehow wins over the crowd. Yeah, the humans in this world are kind of stupid, but anyway. So yay, uh, they get the bees get all their honey back and shut down all the honey production companies, which is actually bad. Because, well, the bees, like, they, they have so much honey now that they don't need to do anything. But the problem is that they, you know, bees pollinate flowers. But now they have honey, they don't need to, they have, now that they have all the honey in the world, they don't need to work or anything. And so they don't go out and pollinate the flowers and the, all the flowers in the city die. Or at least wilt, whatever. And that... And yeah, that that basically causes problems for Vanessa, who who's a florist. And and Barry and Barry finds out. Barry is like, oh, this is not good. None of this is good. Like, oh shit, what have I done? 
And Vanessa's like, we, we gotta do something. And so they come up with a plan to repollinate all the flowers that involves somehow going to a fucking... They, they, they take a plane to travel to a, a competition elsewhere where there are where there are where there are still flowers I don't I don't fucking know this this doesn't make any fucking sense because like that can't be the only place on earth that has flowers but whatever apparently all the flowers just die on earth I'm guessing I don't know or I guessing they just, or maybe it's just that one city I don't know the movie doesn't make it clear I don't think it does. But they go to a different city to get to get flowers. They 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 take flowers from these floats for a parade, and then they, and then they bring them back to the city. On a you and on like they take a plane back to the fucking city, I think. And but somehow Barry Benson accidentally knocks out the two pilots on the plane, so Vanessa and Barry have to like work together to fly the plane. And no joke, all the fucking bees from Barry Benson's hive or community or whatever, they all come and they like help land the plane. Like they literally they literally put themselves under the plane to like lift it or whatever, help steer it or whatever. I don't know how. It's it's the B movie. What do you expect? And then they all and then they help land the fucking plane. And then And then and then they and then they and then all the bees take go to the flowers and then take all the pollen from them or whatever and then they go around the city and and repollinate the flowers and yay flower the flowers are back and and now and cue and then skip to the epilogue of the movie the bees are actually working with the humans so the humans actually uh you know like the 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 bees have to like like they, they basically I'm assume, I'm assuming they saw the hind of the humans so like now now they're not it's not there's no force involved in it anymore so the bees both the bees and the humans benefit it's just like I'm like okay oh and Barry Benson runs a law office for whatever reason in Vanessa's Vanessa's flower shop and um and yeah that's how the movie goes it's very stupid it's, it's it's stupid it's stupid it's stupid as hell it's very stupid god it's just uh, it's so dumb it's so fucking dumb ah <laughs> uh, I, I tried to summarize it I, actually i think i summarized it pretty well <laughs> because oh my god I, I i don't know where to start with this movie okay um oh hi naim and Joshua and Just Dance God. I don't think I ever got around to watching the B movie game stream. I don't even. I remember playing the game as well. I don't. I like. You probably. I don't think you were pressing for it. At nine was, but I don't think you were Maple. But that's okay. But yeah, I remember. I remember streaming the game, the Wii version anyway. And see, I hadn't watched the movie, so I had no idea what was going on in the game. But. Now that I've watched the movie, well, I, I, I'm still not gonna replay. I'm, I'm not gonna replay the game. Just no, because the game kind of bored me. So just no. Although if I do replay it, I'll probably just go to the Xbox 360 version because I've heard that that one's better. But whatever. It's this is not just the meme movie. It's the stupid movie as well. <laughs> oh shit! Damn. Exactly. That's basically what this movie is. It's stupid. And Well, let me just let me just go to the positives. It only took one stream to finish it. Yeah. It took me like what? 5 hours? 3 4 5 6 at most. I don't remember. But it wasn't a very long game. I'd rather watch Shrek 3. I agree. Shrek 3 at least entertained me. It wasn't good objective objectively speaking, but it did entertain me. Kind of like Collision Course from the Ice Age series. It's like that, where both of those movies uh, entertain me, but the B movie didn't entertain me. For the most part. I mean, where do I start with this? Well, let me just talk about the positives. Um, the animation is... I don't even like the animation. 
Like I don't, I don't, I don't mind the art style. I actually like the art style. I'm just not a fan of the animation itself. Uh, how do I put this? I mean, it's decent, I guess. It's decent. It's not. It's a bit dated, but it's not really dated. It's not really dated. Like it, it works. It, it's it's decent. I won't say good, but it's it's decent. And I like the art style. I liked the art style. Well, sort of. Like, some humans look absolutely ugly, but some of them don't look bad. Vanessa looks okay, but the defendant in the trial, he, he looked just, he looked butt ugly. Granted, he was supposed to look ugly, but he still, like, I don't think, the, I don't think the art style does him any favors. Like, you can make a character look, you can make a character look ugly and good. He didn't look ugly and good, he just looked ugly, in my opinion. But I did like the art style. Well, sort of. <laughs> I guess you could say sort of. <laughs> Anything else? No. I can't think of any other positives. Yeah, Jerry Seinfeld voiced the B character. No, I'm not going to do another Just Dance 3 stream. I'm done with Just Dance 3. I've had enough of that game. Like, I'm not going to do any other Just Dance streams, except for maybe 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2022. But all the other games I'm done with, so I'm not going back to those. Anyway, but yeah, this, this movie is just very, very stupid. Like, the world, the world building is all weird and shit. I just, it's hard for me to explain. You'd have to watch it to see what I mean. It's just a very, very weird, very stupid movie. Not the dumbest movie I've watched, but it's up there. It's just a very weird movie. And another thing... Well, I, I'm trying to think of any other positives. I mean... The voice acting was... The voice acting was good, I guess. Yeah, it was good. It was good. It was... Yeah, it was good, I guess. That's all I can say. Like, the, everyone did a good job. I won't say it was great voice acting, but it was good. So... Yeah, that's all I can say. Are there any other positives? Uh... I guess... I guess the characters, Barry and his best friend, I forgot what his name was, was it Adam? I don't even know, let me look this shit up. And let me just, let me just... Honey just got funny, ha 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 ha. Uh, let's see, Adam, yeah that's what his name was, Adam. Okay. Well, uh, I guess I liked the characters, uh, Barry, Adam, and I guess Vanessa. They were, they were interesting. They were a bit funny occasionally. It's like, yeah, I guess. I, 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 I'm trying to think of things to say, good things to say about this movie. It's just so basic. Well, what's the? How is this a six point one? This does not deserve a six point one. It doesn't. I know DreamWorks. You guys tried, but but no, just no. Oh yeah, Patrick Warburton was in this. He was Ken. He was the voice of Ken, uh, Vanessa's former boyfriend. I'm guessing. Oh yeah, Chris Rock was in this. He was he was the voice of Moose Blood, uh, a mos uh, a mosquito character in the in the um, film, but see, that character had such little screen time that I completely forgot that he was voiced by Chris Rock. Chris Rock, you need to find other roles because they don't deserve your voice. This movie does not deserve your voice. Sorry, not sorry. Anyway. That's my actual name, Adam. Ha! Huh? Not sure, that is your name. Adam. 
See, now you share the same name as as the the B the B the B the the B the main protagonist the protagonist's best friend. Yeah. And the lead singer of Maroon 5, which is nice. Anyway, uh, but yeah, I, that's all I can say. Like, that's that's I, I'm trying I'm trying to think of positives for this movie, but there there just aren't very many. Okay, let well, fuck it. I'm going to the negatives. Okay, the negatives. Ugh, this movie, I just oh my god, it's just so dumb. It's so stupid. This is really fucking stupid. Okay, well, first of all, the humor. This movie, this movie had like, it, it's just, it's just, it's just so. How do I put this? Try hard. It's try hard. It's just, it's just quite try hard, because most of the time this movie didn't make me laugh. It didn't. It did not. There are a few moments that made me laugh, but for the most part, this movie just wasn't funny. It just wasn't. Like, most of the jokes just don't land. They, they just don't. IMDb ratings are trash. They are never liable because the, cause the website's always getting review bombed. Explains a lot. Even more try hard than say creatures from the crusty for the crust from the I don't even remember creature from the crusty crab. You know that's a good question. Um, I wouldn't say it's that try hard, but it's close. That's my opinion anyway, because they both the humor from both they, they both they it, they both suck. I'm sorry, but the B movie just isn't something that's going to make you laugh very much. Although there are a few moments, there were a few moments that did make me laugh, but that's that that was it. <laughs> that was it. Sorry. <laughs> and although I will say that the movie did entertain me more than the game, so I guess that's a plus. I guess I can say that that's a positive. But then again, video game licensed video games tend to be crap anyway, so that's not saying much. I'm just reaching for positives. But really, like, that's to be expected from a movie. Like, what what else? Like, movies tend to be better than their uh, video game tie-ins. Although there are a few exceptions. But, yeah. Because, like, for example, Shrek the Third, the game is actually... I'd say it's more entertaining than the movie. The guy, the game, the game itself is actually decent, but the movie, uh, no. <laughs> but anyway, uh, but yeah, the humor is just try hard. It's like, like the writers were, they were trying to go for, they were trying to go for a sitcom feel with the humor, and it just didn't work. That's how I can, that's how I can best describe it. The writers were trying to go for a sitcom like kind of humor. And it just didn't work. Like, I'm sorry, but the humor in this movie just doesn't work. It really doesn't. Just because Jerry Seinfeld is is in your fucking movie doesn't mean you can try to use that kind of style. Because it just it, it it just won't translate well. Not it's not guaranteed to translate well. Sorry, not sorry. So the plot is also very stupid. The plot is very stupid, and not in a good way, because you can make st really stupid plots work. You can make stupid plots work. This one is just one of those that just doesn't work. Because, like, I don't know, because, like, and it's kind of all over the place, too. Like, I have a hard time understanding what the central conflict of the story is. Is it about Barry Benson's desire not to be an ordinary bee, or is it about... Or is, it, or is this movie just a, a, a humans versus animals war type thing or whatever? It's hard to say because the movie like shits focus um, shortly after Barry meets Vanessa. And it's hard for me to tell what the central conflict is. Or uh, I guess there is a central conflict where Barry is like, you know what? Screw this be life. But then he's like, actually, no, that's what kind of life is necessary. 
I guess that's the conflict, but it's told in such a haphazard, chaotic way that, you know, you, that's going to be hard to understand that at first. I just, I don't know. Like, the plot is just really dumb. Like, really, bees suing humans and just fucking helping to land a plane. That part was, I was like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck? And among other things, like, those are, those are just two moments that just made me go, like, okay. Like, it's to me, it's not so much that they're unrealistic. I, that's not the issue I have with these. It's just that they're so stupid and, like, not in a way that actually helps the movie, but in a way that harms it, in my opinion. I, I don't know. It's just this movie just, it requires you to turn your brain off basically and i i just i i can't get behind it i don't know i just i just can't i've never watched stranger things the thing with jerry seinfeld is that he's a great comedian but not particularly a great actor that's probably why that's probably why this movie is kind of the way it is because i thought oh this guy's funny we could use him and i'm just like no fam just because, just because you have a comedian in your movie doesn't automatically make your movie funny. Just look at The Secret Life of Pets. Kevin Hart was a comedian, yet he did not help the movie at all. In fact, I think he made it worse. Oops. Because his character, Snowball, was really fucking irritating. And for whatever reason, Barry Benson just keeps talking like he's doing stand-up. I, and again, like, I know, because, you know, it kind of makes sense because, you know, Jerry Seinfeld, he's a comedian. But, in a way, I kind of found that distracting and even annoying at times. It's like, can you make your character talk normally for a change, please? Like, please? I just remembered the jokes and humor in that game felt so forced. Yeah. Exactly, creature of the crusty crab. Like the the the, the it, it like the writers clearly had never written a joke before. Now with the land of square pandas, so sort of humor in, actually improved. But but in the but in creature from the crusty crab, it it just fucking like the humor was just non-existent. Or no, it was existent. It existed, but it sucked. Yeah, the SpongeBob movie game was okay. It was somewhat decent. It's just that the padding ruins the game because when you think about it, the game actually has very little content. Because the because again, the levels are just they're not see, the thing is that the the form as I said in my rant stream, two I had two rant streams on this, of course. Like, I think I did. I can't remember, but whatever. Like, the formula for the movie game the, for Battle for Bikini Bomb, I mean, it just didn't fit the movie game because, again, like, the movie game, it should have had a completely different structure. The levels were just very short instead of big open worlds. And, like, in Battle for Bikini Bottom, and, you know, the game suffered for it because it's like, oh, we have these short linear levels. We gotta make the... And we're, we're trying to use Battle for Bikini Bottom's formula, which was more suited for larger, more open levels. So what do we do? We backtrack and we pad out the game. And sure enough, the mess that was the movie game was born. But it didn't completely suck. I'll admit that much. Yeah, exactly, Naeem. Like, just because you have a comedian in your movie doesn't mean that, that the movie is going to be good. Now, Chris Rock's a comedian, but I think he's also a decent voice actor, so he doesn't count. But with Kevin Hart and Jerry Seinfeld, it's just like, no. Just no. Just no. Just no. Which is why it's very important to make sure you cast the right people for your movie. Because your voice actors can make or break your movie. They really can. They they can. And, like, you, you have to be careful when it comes to casting. <laughs> but, yeah, this movie has... This movie is just... This movie's plot is just very, very stupid. Vanessa herself is very, very stupid. Like, I don't know, like, she, she, 
she she comes off as some dumb blonde well not like that dumb but just a little bit dumb just a little bit dumb I actually don't think it helps her character in fact I think it makes her kind of annoying like she's kind of likable but at the same time she's kind of not because I don't know like she just she seems to have like no she I don't know how to describe her character she's a bit She's a bit mindless, I guess, a bit dumb, a bit, like, airheaded, and not in a charming way. I don't know. I don't know. I guess that's just me. I don't know. That, it's kind of subjective, but, like, I have, I have mixed feelings on her character. I just have mixed feelings about her character. But that just ties into point number two, so whatever. Okay, anything else? Um... So the humor sucks. The plot sucks. Anything else? Um, hmm. The dialogue is shit. Well, it's I wouldn't say it's shit. It's not. It's I, shit is a strong word. It's not like a, the Amazing Spider-Man level bad. No, it's not that bad. But it's not that good either. Like, it, it, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not, sometimes it's okay. It's just, the quality of the dialogue is just not consistent. I should say that. It's just, it's just not very consistent. Speaking of Chris Rock, he's still going on and on about the slapping incident with Will Smith at the Oscars. Like, that was five to six months ago. Move on already. He's still on that? Wow. <laughs> He's still on that. Like, come on, guys. Move on already. Well, I, I don't know if Will's doing this, but I know Chris Rock is. Like, like come on, Chris. It, it, was, it was six months ago. Come on, man. You and Will Smith are both great actors. and Like, come on. You don't need to... Well, Will is anyway. I can't say Chris is great, but he's decent. Um... But like, come on, you you guys are great. Like you don't you don't you don't need to do you don't need to have this feud. Come on. But anyway. Uh but yeah, the quality of the dialogue is just it's just not consistent. As I said, there are times where they try to like the jokes just don't hit. And there are times where the dialogue just sounds really fucking stupid. And, like, I don't know, I'm trying to, like, because as I said, like, there are times where Barry Benson, like, there's, like, he, he talks as if he's, he constantly talks as if he's doing stand-up, and it's just kind of annoying, and it, and it kind of ruins the dialogue. Like, sometimes he talks like a normal person, but sometimes he, he, he talks like a comedian, and I'm just like, why? Like... Like if you like if he like if you want the character to sound like this, just have him be a stand-up comedian or whatever. Like just come on. Just no. Just just no. <sighs> like I like it's just And plus, as I said, this plot is very stupid, so there are times where the characters, particularly Vanessa, just say really dumb things and it it just it just doesn't help the plot. It doesn't make things more entertaining, it just makes things dumber. I, I don't know. This is again. It's something you just have to see. Like, like the dialogue just made me. It, it just. It, I just don't like it. I. Just, I just think it's stupid. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's just bad. I think I've covered all the negatives. There are probably more, but. Yeah, this this movie, I have very mixed feelings on it. Actually, no, they're mostly negative. <laughs> I don't like this movie. <laughs> I watched it because simply because I I watched it just so I could just do this rant stream. I even watched it right before I went to work. I woke up pretty early, so I was like, eh, I have a few hours. Let me just go watch this movie and get it out of the way. And throughout the entire movie, I was just in I was I was just like in this constant state of what the fuck is going on. Just 
this movie is just a big no, in my opinion. Just a big no. It's just very, very basic. Let me see some of these reviews. And that's not. Oh, let me look. Let me look at some of the. Let me look at the. The um. Well, let me look at. Look at five star reviews. Silly with an absurd storyline. Exactly. Like, this review is basically saying the same things that I just said. Like, like the animation's... I think the animation's decent. I don't think it's great, but I think it's decent. But, like... But, yeah, like, the plot is just very, very stupid. And the character, as I said, the lead character just has a really annoying voice. Yeah, exactly. This is exactly what I'm saying. One, like, like, see, like, exactly. Like, like, let's read this part right here. Like, I, I, like, I actually, I actually love this review right here because it, it encapsulates everything I just found wrong about the movie. Okay. The story about a honeybee, Barry B. Benson, who travels outside the hive and falls in love with a human woman named Vanessa, who, in a relationship with another man, Ken, while eventually, oh, who is in a relationship with another man, while eventually uncover, eventually uncovers a shocking conspiracy involving bees was all over the place. One minute, it's a movie about going against the hive in order to follow your own path and dreams through self-discovery and individualism, then the next minute the film turns to an unconventional, messed up bestiality fantasy. I mean, I don't really mind the trope of bestiality personally, as long as it's done well. But, whatever. Only for it to change, yet again, into a courtroom drama about fighting against prejudices and discrimination before tackling off into a disaster movie where everyone has to deal with the unintended consequences of their actions. It's a cluster of a mess. Exactly. That's what I, that's what I was saying. It's like the movie's plot is all over the place. It goes from one theme to another and then to another. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? I, I, like, that's the thing. The movie is just all over the place. Well, let's see, where was I? All the writers, Jerry Seinfeld, Andy Robin, Barry Martyr, and Spike Ferriston put too much, too many threads into this film. Not only that, but the film abandoned some of the many plot lines that leaves many plot holes and unanswered questions. It gets highly confusing at times, plus it felt somewhat lazy not to finish the story arcs they started. Not only that, but the story didn't even know what tone it was going for. It sways from mindless tongue-in-cheek comedy like the 1990s TV series Seinfeld to serious animation movie with a strong ethical ground back and forth. Exactly. Jerry Seinfeld just should not have been in this movie. That's, that's basically my biggest complaint. It's annoying to watch. Why? Because the mixed tone hurts the moral message. It's so wishy-washy flipper-flopper. Flip-flopper. A good example of Bubble is how the first act seemed to be preaching an Aesop against the human exploitation of animals, but then flips the message on his head around toward the middle where Benson dreams about laughing about the other 
bugs getting smashed. What the hell? It's so mean-spirited and dark. Yeah, I don't know why they... That moment of the movie was just really weird. But... Anyway... And there's more to this, but I'm not going to read everything. But yeah, basically this movie's plot is shit. Oh, hey, Thomas. I never read reviews from IMDb because 9 times out of 10 is either a 1, or 1 out of 10 or a 10 out of 10. Fair. That's fair. But yeah, like... But yeah, that's basically the B movie. It sucks. Let me just take Vanessa out. <laughs> I, I, don't, I actually kind of don't like her character. But Barry and Adam are alright. Just that Barry has an annoying voice. Adam's voice is fine. But Barry's voice is just annoying. But yeah, the, me, the B movie... It, it sucks, in my opinion. But anyway, let's go to Over the Hedge. So, Over the Hedge. Well, think open season. But not shit. That's basically how I can describe Over the Hedge. It's it's it has a similar approach to Open Season, you know about, it, like you know, about you know uh, wild animals fighting against humans, except that unlike Open Season, that part's executed a lot better because it's actually pres that theme is present throughout most of the movie instead of just shoehorned in at the last during the last what 15, 20 minutes of the film like an open season one so yeah over the hedge far better than whatever the hell open season was so over the hedge like yeah exactly it's a better version of open season so if you if you didn't like open season well just try over the hedge you, you'll i'm sure you'll like that one or at least you'll find it better so over the hedge now I now when I first watched this movie, I had known that it existed for a while, for many for like ever since it, ever since it was like, like announced, but for some reason like I <laughs> for some reason I had never bothered to watch it until today. So not today, sorry, but until like when I when I uh, bought it from Amazon and just watched the Blu-ray disc. So, I was like, why not? I finally get to watch the movie. I've never played the game. I know there's a game. But I finally got to watch the movie, and I actually liked it. I actually did like the movie. It's not one of my favorites, but I did enjoy the movie. So, positives. Well, the humor is nice. It's not the best, I, it's not the best humor around, but... There are there are plenty of jokes that will make you laugh. There are. The film actually did make me laugh, unlike the B movie, which did not make me laugh for for the most part. So So yeah. The humor is nice. I liked some of the characters, some of them. Some of them were just some of them I just want to slap. But some of them I actually did like. I liked some of the characters. I liked RJ, the raccoon. Um, I forgot to talk about the plot. My bad. I'll talk about that in a moment. I liked RJ. I liked Vern. I liked... I kind of liked Tammy. Um, let's see. Who else? I think it's just those three. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think it's just those three. The others are e the others were tolerable for the most part. But but yeah, like but yeah. Um Yeah, I I did like those three characters. I thought they were I thought they were entertaining. Kinda of surprised this never became a franchise or even got a sequel. Right? Like you're gonna make you're gonna make a you're gonna make a you're gonna you're going to make um a series 
for home but not for this movie like why this movie could have actually benefited from a sequel i'm not gonna lie like i can see this i can see a sequel or, or a series like either one so i don't know i don't know dreamworks i feel like dreamworks could have made some more could have done more with this because honestly some of their movies did not need to end up as series but this one could have been a series or a sequel or it could have had a sequel i mean anyway but yeah i did like some of the characters were there any characters i disliked eh. actually probably not well there were times where hammy annoyed me if i'm going to be honest but there are times where he where i actually liked him so i have a mix so i'm like i'm kind of mixed with I, I kind of like him, kind of, kind of find him annoying. Like, I, 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 I have a love-hate relationship with Hammy. Because there are times where he's funny, but there are times where he kind of gets annoying. But, um, the skunk character, who's voiced by Wanda Sykes. Why does Wanda Sykes always have to voice the sassy characters? I guess she's just good at that kind of thing. It works, but... But really, the skunk character barely had any presence in this film. She's just the, she's just forgettable. She's just there. She's just there. She's just there. But anyway, I guess I don't. I guess I don't hate any of the characters. But yeah, so really, the characters are okay for the most part. They're all right. They're generally okay. Some are just there. Some are some are just there, and some are actually good, in my opinion. Uh, let's see. I guess you can say Hammy is a bit too hammy. Maple, you're banned. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> now I'm reading that the movie didn't actually make the movie that DreamWorks wanted, which is why it didn't get a sequel. The CEO quoted, it was close and almost. Yeah, fair enough. She also voiced Bessie and Barnyard. Yeah, I was actually gonna, I was thinking about mentioning that, but I was like, eh, eh, I was like, eh, uh, I, got, I don't think it's important. But yeah, like yeah, she also voiced Bessie the Cow in uh, Barnyard. So, yeah. Yeah, she was also present in that. In that. In that. Yeah, she was present in that movie and in the series. Yeah, Barnyard actually spawned the series. So, yay. Oh, you meant my, oh, okay. Yeah, YouTube really should need to, she really should add an edit feature. Okay, so, you, okay, so what you mean to say, Maple, is that is now I'm reading that the movie didn't actually make the money that DreamWorks wanted, which is why it didn't get a sequel. Okay, that makes more sense. I, it's okay, I kind of understood what you said anyway. There's a video game adaptation of this movie that kind of acts like a prequel to this movie, as it takes a year after this movie's event. Well, wouldn't, that, wouldn't it be a sequel then? Because like it, the, if if it takes place after the movie, then, well, whatever. Anyway, yeah, Steve Carell's in a number of productions. Most knows most notably, he plays the character Gru from Despicable Me. But anyway, back to, but yeah, like, yeah, um, 
you probably wanted to mention that in one of my earlier rant streams, but but anyway, uh, let's see. Is there any, are there any other positives? I like the plot. I like the plot actually. I like the whole plot where. So the plot is this. So RJ is a raccoon, you know, just hunting for food as raccoons usually do, and he comes he comes across this cave with this giant bear. I forgot what the bear's name was. Um. And. He sees that the bear has a lot of food stock, so he take tries to take it, but then he gets too greedy, and ends up give and ends up alerting the bear, and and then the the bear had a wagon of food. The wagon accidentally rolls out and um land, ends up in the street, and then some car literally runs into it, and then the it just destroys everything. And the bear is like, if you don't get, if you don't replace all the food you just stole from me, I will kill you. You have a week, because that's when my hibernation ends. And Arte is like, shit, fuck, where am I going to find food? And so, um, so RJ, uh, he he comes across this ad or whatever, and he. Uh, well, what some paper or whatever, and then he 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 finds out where he can get more food, and and on the way he meets uh he meets uh this community of wild animals, Vern and the Vern the turtle, Hammy the squirrel, uh, a possum dad and his possum daughter. I literally forgot what their names are. I forgot what their names were. Um, uh, skunk. A skunk character. I forgot what her name was. Are there any others? Oh yeah, uh, porcupine. A porcupine family. Forgot all their names. Uh, really, it's it's really just Hammy the squirrel, Vern the turtle, and uh, RJ the 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 raccoon. I remember. Like th those are like those are like the only rem those are like the only uh, distinct characters. If I'm gonna be honest, those are the only ones that stand out to me everyone else is just there <laughs> i'm sorry but everyone else is just there um so rj convinces them to help him get get you know steal food from the humans in this community like there's this community that was recently built um and and like and like it, the humans built it on some of the territory that the wild animals had been inhabiting, so RJ is like, okay, let's go steal their food. Like we can stockpile it here since you guys need food anyway, right? Because Vern and the, the community they needed food for the winter or whatever. So Vern is like, I don't like this plan, but everyone's like, man, come on, don't be a pussy, let's do it. Well, they don't say that, but you get what I mean. So everyone. So throughout the movie, they, they steal a bunch of shit and stockpile it in the wild. Um, and then RJ, RJ at first is thinking of just stealing the food after everyone's, you know, put it, everyone stockpiled it. But then he's like, but then everyone's, everyone's just, everyone like treats him like some sort of hero. Like they're all very nice to him and they treat him as one of their own. And he's like, I feel like shit. And... And, um, so, one day, one night or whatever, he tries to take the food, um, actually, no, Vern, Vern is like, Vern tries to take the food, but he takes it back to the humans, because he's like, no, we shouldn't be stealing, this isn't right, and then RJ is like, no, I need that shit, and then, and then they get into a fight, and then the wagon just go, gets loose, and, and, this takes place during the day, actually, the wagon gets, the, the wagon, like, like, um, gets loose and then the and then he gets hooked onto this dog or whatever who just runs around the neighborhood just spilling the food everywhere and then the wagon gets destroyed in all the chaos and shit and and then RT is like fuck now we need to go and get more food oh but everyone gets mad at Vern by the way and Vern accidentally says something insensitive about the community and yeah, they all they they all basically turn on him. Um, so Archie takes the others to 
find more food and um, well, Vern apologizes later and then they all go and try to get more food from the humans uh, but then RJ, he just had to get this last food item that that the bear wanted some some knockoff Pringles brand shit or whatever because the bear really wanted those like that was the most important item so RJ had to have it but unfortunately he compromised the whole mission because if he had just left that item behind the anim all the animals could have escaped just fine but no all they alert the humans in the house and it didn't help that the human the owner of the house was the owner was like she basically ran the entire community of houses and so she tries to get rid of all the animals and she calls an exterminator who also tries to get rid of all the animals all the animals get caught except for RJ who takes the food to the bear who was literally about to just who who was literally heading right down to RJ's to, to RJ to kill him but but yeah but like yeah the bear gets his food back then RJ's like you know what? Fuck this shit. And he he just pushes the cart into the uh, into the road, and then because like the tr because like the exterminator's truck was like it was just passing by in that area, and RJ's like, let me just use this wagon to stop the truck. So he did that, and then <laughs> and then <laughs> and then the truck hits the wagon, and then spins out of control, and uh, somehow the exterminator gets knocked out or whatever. But yeah, RJ comes back and tries to help the animals, but then the bear is like, You just you just lost all my food and then he tries to he's just trying to kill RJ the entire time. And then the and then and then the other animals Oh yeah, I forgot RJ revealed at one point during the last mission that he was basically getting all the food for himself. So that made all the other animals mad. But then Vern's like to all the other animals in the truck, no 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 no, he's on our side now. He came back for us. And then they all go and help him against the bear oh but unfortunately the bear is not the only one hunting the animals the the exterminator wakes up tries to capture the animals the the lady who owns the entire community or runs or whatever she tries to capture the animals so you have three enemies like all like they're all trying to get RJ and the others but then RJ uh Vern and Vern come up with a plan to, to stop all three all the, all the enemies and and they do that, and you know, the day is saved. The bear gets, like, the, like there was this, there was a system in one of the houses, and in, in the in the in the lady's house, and and the animals basically use that system against uh, the lady and the bear and the exterminator. It was a system to keep out wild animals, so they all get like basically electrocuted. And, like it was a very, very, very messed up system, but it basically electrocuted them, and then the lady got arrested or whatever for like for using illegal extermination practices or whatever. The exterminator just sneakily runs off, and the bear gets gets taken to animal control, and then yeah, the day saved. RJ, RJ uh, reunites with the others, and you know they all become one happy family. Oh, and apparently Hammy's stocked up on nuts, so they have food for the winter, I guess. So, but yeah, happy ending. And this is a, this after this is after credit scene where RJ tries to get money, uh, gets tries to get sna a snack from the vending machine, but but uh, you know, and he actually actually he actually ends up getting all the snacks to fall on the ven uh from the vending machine. And then all the animals are happy, but RJ can't open the flap to get the snacks. So, yeah, that everyone gets sad. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically the that's basically the plot. So kind of like open season, but not crap. Oh, so the Meet the Robinsons video game. Acts like a sequel to the movie as well. I haven't seen Meet the Robinsons in years. Like, I remember watching the movie. I just don't remember a lot of it. All I remember is that the two characters are distantly related. The two main characters. That's all I'm going to say, though. I'm not going to say anything else because I do know a few other things. I do remember a few other things about that movie, but... But that's all I will say. 
Okay, but yeah, the plot was pretty funny, and and it had a nice and it had and it was a nice use of the whole liar reveal trope, something that the open season, the first open season movie didn't do a very good job of using, and because cause because it's uh, even Tim and said in that in that rant stream of in that open season rant stream that over the hedge did the whole liar reveal plot better than open season, and that's not wrong, that is not wrong. That that wasn't wrong, <laughs> but yeah, like, really. But yeah, like really. Um, the plot was pretty good. Not the best DreamWorks plot ever, but it was it was solid. It was solid. I won't say this movie. I wouldn't call this movie great, but. But you know, it, it was it was good. I'd say it was good. Not great, but good. Because going back to the humor, I will say that the the humor didn't always hit for me. There are a few jokes here and there that just didn't uh, that I just don't think I just didn't think were very good. But but I think the humor is actually solid overall. Could have been better, but it was solid. It was decent. So, anything else I can say about the positives? I mean, I guess I like the sound. The soundtrack was nice. I'm, I can't remember any particular songs, but I mean, but I mean, I, I guess the sound the soundtrack was the soundtrack was decent. Because there were there were moments, you know, of of there were action scenes in the soundtrack. The music that played during those scenes was pretty fitting, so I'd say the soundtrack was soundtrack was decent. Oh, and going back to the bear character, no joke. In the B movie, they literally reused they literally reused his model there. Like I watched the B movie after Over the Hedge, and. And I was like, there's this one point in during the B movie where where Barry uh, Benson calls a bear to court for whatever reason. I forgot what the reason was, but whatever. And I'm like, this is literally the same exact model as the antagonist, uh, one of the antagonists from Over the Head. So they literally reused his model. I was like, that model seemed that model looked familiar to me. So that was just so that was like. And and I, I was and like I just don't like that they did that though because for one thing it was just out of place with uh, with the movie's art style it just it like that bear just looked out of place I was just like no they they could they they should have used a different model but anyway but yeah I'd say the soundtrack was decent okay uh any other. Okay, so we talked about the humor, the plots, the animation. Okay, actually, I would say that that's a negative. Although, like, not, not, like, although it's not really the movie's fault. Because, well, for one thing, I should say that the animation is, it's, it's rather dated. It's dated. It's, you can, like, it, it, it's, it hasn't aged very well. Like it's not, it's not, it's not terrible. Like it, it doesn't look like really, really dated. It, but it does look somewhat dated. But again, this isn't the movie's fault. I mean, it was two thousand six. Um, although I feel like the animation could have been a bit better, though, because there are movies that came out earlier than that that looked better. But again. You know, like this, but again, like not every movie in 2006 had good animation, a uh, great animation. The animation is serviceable here, it's serviceable, but it could have been better. And it's, and it doesn't help that it's just dated. It, it, it just, it looks dated. Even more dated than Ice Age, I would say. Well, no, I guess that's not fair. It's, well, I don't know, like they're both pretty dated. I'd say they're both pretty dated. It's hard to say which one 
looks worse. I guess maybe the first Ice Age looks a bit worse, but then again, it's it's an older movie, so what do you expect? But really, that's all like that's. Are there any other negatives? Um, I don't know. I can't really think of any. I think this is really the only negative. There might be other negatives as well. I know, for one, for me, like again, as I er mentioned earlier, the humor, the humor was overall solid, but there was there were a few moments where it was just where I just didn't very, I just didn't laugh. Oh, but, but like really, I think it's a solid movie all around. It's just the animation that could have been improved, even for two thousand six standards. But other than that, I, can, I don't really have anything bad to say about, anything negative to say about the film. I thought it was, I thought it was pretty solid overall. Not one, not, not one of DreamWorks best movies. That would belong to say, How to Train Your Dragon, all the movies, all the Kung Fu Panda movies, well one and two anyway. Uh, Shrek one and two, Madagascar one. You know, stuff like Megamind, like, it, Over the Hedge isn't really on that level, but I'd say it's, I'd say it's good. Better than the B-movie, anyway, ew. Just, ew. Ew. Anyway. But yeah, Over the Hedge is overall a solid film. Rock solid. Solid of rock. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Okay. Break time! Break time. <laughs> yeah, I'll be right back. Um, I'm gonna go and and you guys can go and have a break as well. So like, I don't know exactly how long. Probably 20, 30 minutes at most, at most. But I'll be back and we'll continue with flushed away and home. But yeah, for now, you guys go and take a break. I shall return.
Okay, I am back. All right, sorry. I think I'm good now. All right, so now let's talk. Okay, sorry about that. My PC fucking died. Literally when I just... Just when I... Just when I had come... Just when I had come to... Uh, just when I had returned from my break, my PC died. Just wow. Now on to Flushed Away. Wait, hold up. Patton Oswalt. He was he he was the voice of Max in the second Secret Life of Pets 2 film. I mean, in the second Secret Life of Pets film, but not in the first. Why did the voice actor switch? Yeah, he also voices Remy in Ratatouille, which I know because I recently, because I watched Ratatouille yesterday. Good movie. But anyway. Flushed Away. Okay, so Flushed Away. I've, I've known about this movie for, for a long time. In fact, I remember, actually, when I was a kid, I remember... I think I was like 12 at the time. Like some somewhere around that. Um somewhere around that age. I I remember I remember like I remember watching the movie. I don't remember if I watched it in theaters or on DVD. Probably on DVD, but you know, when I started rewatching it, I didn't really remember most of the film. I'd forgotten like most of the film when I watched the when I watched it on Blu-ray. There were a few scenes that I remembered, but that was it. Um, but yeah, so but it was nice watching this movie again. Uh flushed away, what can I say about it? It's, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good movie. I won't say it's one one of the best movies that DreamWorks has ever made, but it's a good movie. Although there's some, I think there's something about it that's a bit off putting to me, but I can't quite figure out what it what it is. But whatever. But yeah, positives. I actually like the animation. It's. So for those of you, so for those of you who have watched like say Chicken Run or Wallace and Gromit or whatever, the animation's like that except that it's a lot more fluid. It's like that, because I, I can't remember Ardman Animations worked with DreamWorks on this one. Whatever their whatever that company was called, I can't remember. But yeah, the animation, the animation is the animation is actually good. I like it. I actually like that they went with that style. So, so like it, it's it's very it's very fluid and nice to look at, and the characters are still expressive, and you know they they all they have they have very they have very expressive motions and shit. It's it's, it's just good all around. I actually like the arts the animation style and the art style as well. I like the art style. I actually like it. It's nice to look at. So, yeah. Uh, the humor. The humor is, is decent. The humor is decent. It doesn't always hit, but when it does, it hits. It hits pretty well. It, the movie did make me laugh several times.
um, the the characters are kind of the, some of the characters are funny, like the two henchmen of the frog villain. They were funny. The frog villain himself was also funny, as well as like the other frog villain. They were both funny. Sid, Sid, you know that that sewer rat that shows up at the beginning of the movie in Roddy's house. Roddy's just Roddy's a rat who lives in a house. He lives in the house of a high class family. Like Sid was funny. Rita, the like the like Roddy's love interest, who's also a sewer rat. Um, she had moments of funniness. But really, she wasn't the funniest character. Neither was Roddy. But anyway, but yeah, the humor was decent overall. Um, let's see. What else can I say? I liked the plot. The plot was nice. I liked the plot. It was. It's okay, so the plot is this. So Roddy is he's again, he's a rat who lives with a high class family. He's a pet rat of theirs. And he and he um he he seems to be living the good life because you know because it's because because he, he lives in a luxurious household, but he's just but you know, he the problem is that he doesn't have any any roommates or anything like that. He just plays with dolls and and talks to them and plays with them as if they were people. So yeah. And then and then one one night the sewer rat Sid comes out of nowhere and starts making himself at home by making a mess everywhere. And Roddy tries to Roddy tries to trick him into going to the toilet so that he could flush him, but Sid but Sid turns the tables on Roddy and flushes him down instead. And Roddy ends up in the sewers, and he just he just wants to go back home. And then he comes across this woman named this rat this this female sewer rat named Rita. Um, oh, I forgot this entire movie takes place in London, so you'll be hearing plenty of British accents. Um, there's also an American accent, a French accent, but, but, the, the, but, the, but for the most part, you'll be hearing British accents. Anyway, um, what else was I going to say? Oh yeah, so he meets her and finds out that she's being chased by, by a frog, by, the, by a leader of the, of, a leader of, the, of a criminal organization and he's a the leader's a frog, and he and he he's hunting Rita down because she stole a a, a ruby from him, a jewel from him, a ruby, um, which she claims is her father's. So she says it's her, it was hers to begin with. Um, unfortunately, Roddy accidentally like gets both himself and Rita discovered. And then, and then, um, hmm. But then the two manage to escape somehow. Uh, well, actually, no. What happens is, like, like, Rita gets mad at Roddy for exposing them. And then she, and then she, to, to get herself out of the situation, she, she, she tells the, she tells the frog villain and everyone else on, that you know that Roddy's a, a jewel thief, and then Roddy goes and turns her lie around, and says, "Actually, I know where the I know where the jewel is. It's in her back pocket." And and so um, so the frog villain takes it, and then he takes both rats back, both Roddy and Rita back to his lair. And then Rita, and then during, and then at one point, Roddy accidentally destroys shit in the frog villain's lair. He gets mad, and then Rita, Rita, and then um, let's see, he he decides to punish both Roddy and Rita by literally freezing them in liquid nitrogen. But the two manage to escape, and uh, and Rita and Roddy, um, 
Well, at first they don't get along, but throughout the movie they get along more and more and agree to help each other out while avoiding the frog villain. They eventually make it back home, back to Roddy's home, where Roddy promised to give Rita two jewel, a jewel, technically. He gives her two, but uh, originally it was one. And he, 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 he promised her that as long as she could get him back home. So through a series of mishaps and shit, and close calls they do get back to Roddy's house and I mean but unfortunately like the frog villain plans to literally flood the entire city that the sewer rats li live in uh, because you know at halftime like there was a there was a sports uh, game going on of a, a soccer game and um, at halftime the at halftime there was going to be like water flooding the city because you know that's when everyone who's watching the game uses the bathroom, so... Oops. But Roddy realizes this, and then he heads back to the sewers, and he also lets Sid just take his place in the house. As long as Sid promises to, to treat uh, the little girl who takes care of Roddy well. And so Roddy goes back to the city, warns Rita, but, you know... Unfortunately, the frog villains... The frog villains onto them, so they 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 they, they t uh, fight the frog villain and his minions, and um, but unfortunately, by the time they they uh, by the time they finish, the the water is already like by the time they finish, the water had already started like f heading towards the city. So Roddy comes up with the idea to use liquid nitrogen to freeze the water, which works. It works, fortunately. And Roddy becomes a hero, and then he decides to live with Rita and her big ass family. And yeah, and that's how the story ends. So that's flushed away. And it's an interesting plot. I like it. I like it. I thought it was a pretty good plot. This is a movie I remember enjoying, but nothing about it really stood out. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. I like. I remember enjoying it as a kid, but I I struggled to remember most of it when I started watching this film. There were a few scenes I remembered, like the one where, like the one where, like the two, like the two, two of the frogs' villains' minions are like falling from the, are like falling, and one of them's like, "Keep your legs straight when you hit the water," but then that guy who said that. He hit, he 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 doesn't hit the water. He hits, he hits the he hits the concrete instead, which is funny, while keeping his legs straight. That part I remember, and that was funny. Um, another part I remember was uh, when when you know Roddy Roddy was back at his house again, and then the snails in the background started singing that song "I'm Lonely" or whatever by Akon. And then Roddy just slams the window on them because they were outside singing the song and he they were annoying him so he was like shut up. So those two scenes I remember. Everything else I don't remember. Like no joke, I I had completely forgotten about everything when I watched when I started watching the movie. I was like I don't remember. I remember a few of these scenes, but most of them I just can't remember because the movie that's the thing the movie just doesn't really stand out it, it's 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 a movie that's good but it's not one that's memorable particularly I, 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 I don't know it's just that's how the movie feels to me it just it's just not very memorable Gladys Sharp character? Who's that? Is that the skunk character? I don't remember. The only thing you dislike about is RJ's nightmare during his first night. I don't even remember. Like, I don't even remember... What, what, what his nightmare was. I remember him having a nightmare, I just don't remember what it was. Oh, the skunk character is Stella. Oh, okay. Oh, glad is sharp. You mean the owner of the? You mean the head honcho of the whole community? That lady? That's probably what. That's probably who you mean. 
I'm sorry. I, I, I just have a hard time remembering the, any character's name from Over the Hedge who isn't RJ, Vern, or Hammy. Those are like the only characters I remember the names of. Everyone else, I don't. But anyway. But yeah, Flushed Away, it's a nice film, but it's not particularly memorable. Although I do find it interesting how it's, how it has, it does have a few themes in common with Ratatouille. Like it does, it does have a, it does have a few themes that are similar. You know, it features two, they, they, like the movie features, uh, each movie features a protagonist that, that wants to live a different life. Well, one of them actually doesn't want to live a different life at first. He wants to go back to his old life, but then he's like, you know what, actually I want to live a different life now. But, but yeah, both movies feature rats. And, and like, and like, um, there's a theme that rats are you know, dirty as fuck, which isn't exactly wrong, although Roddy himself would technically be an exception to that, so, but yeah, those are like the only two, those are like the only things that the films have in common, because they have very different storylines, but in any case, um, Anything else? Sella the Skunk is one of your favorite characters. I found her pretty forgettable. I found I found her to be like a discount version of Bessie the Cow from Back at the Barnyard. Just less sassy. Anyway. The characters in Flushed Away. I like the character I like some of the characters. I did like some of the characters. I think I already mentioned this earlier though. I know, I was talking about how funny that the characters were, but I did like some of the characters. I liked Roddy. I liked Rita. I kind of didn't like. I'm sorry. I just kind of don't like her character. Um, Roddy, I liked. Uh, Sid is a toss up for me. Um, uh, the frog villain, he's okay. His minions were pretty funny, though. So, uh, who else? Anyone else? The f the French frog, who was helping the frog villain. The French frog was also pretty. Inter he was interesting. Like I liked some of the characters. Some of them were just. Some of them were either forgettable or just characters I didn't like. But, but yeah, um, I can't think of anything else to say regarding, see, that this movie, I really don't have much to say about it, I'm sorry, I'm trying to come up with things to say about it, there isn't much, it's just not a movie that's going to be, it's just not a very memorable movie, if I'm going to be honest, even though the animation's great, but, yeah. Uh, anything else? Hmm. There was one thing I was going to say. Okay, so we talked about the plot. Oh, right, the humor. Oh, fair warning about the humor. Uh, it's a part of its, I wouldn't say a significant part, but a bit of it, like, it, it's, it, it involves toilet humor. So if you're not a fan of toilet humor, you're probably not going to like this movie because there are several jokes about toilet humor in this film. But yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention. Like, there's an ending. I think there's an after credit scene where Sid, uh, Sid's just relaxing at Roddy's house after Roddy left to go live in the sewers, and 
the the Roddy's owner, uh, Tabitha, little girl, she comes home and she, and she brings a cat with her, and Sid and which scares Sid. I thought that was funny, but anyway, um, but yeah, I can't think of anything else to say. Animation, plot, humor, characters, art style. Am I missing anything? The music, oh, I don't remember. I thought the music was fine, but like. But I don't really remember much of it. I do remember enjoying the, the tracks that would play during the action scenes, but that's really it. So I'll say that the soundtrack is decent. It's decent. Oh, so he... Jean... 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 Reno... Voiced Le Frog? Le Frog. Le Frog. Yeah, that was the that was the frog villain's name. the French frog's villain, not the other frog villain. They're cu they're cousin they were cousins, by the way. Anyway, um, I think that's all I can say about the pauses for Flush Away. Again, solid film overall, but it's not a particularly memorable one, which is sad because. Like, there are other movies that I can easily remember, even movies I haven't seen in years. And then, Flushed Away, though. Well, to be fair, I, the last time I, like, I watched it, like, last time I watched it was, like, what? Probably, like, the late 2000s, so, some, like, some, some, like, maybe 2007, 2008, I don't think it was, like, 2006 when I watched it. But I don't remember. I think I watched it on DVD, so it had to be like 2007 or maybe 2008. But even so, like, it's weird though because I remember Toy. St I remember. Well, actually, I don't really remember the plot of Toy Story 2 all that much either. But I do remember more of it than Flushed Away. Oh, but then again, I did watch Toy Story 2 a lot of times, so that's to be expected. I don't know. I just don't really remember Flushed Away all that much. I just don't. Well, I didn't, I should say. Before watching the movie. Uh, but, whatever. But yeah, Flush Away, overall solid film. Oh, but there are negatives. Uh, negatives. I don't think the animations... You concur. Uh, you're concurring with me! Yay! You're concurring with me! Ew, that sounds so weird. Ew. Negatives? Um... Hmm. I guess I didn't mention that I really didn't like the character Rita. She was honestly kind of a bitch in the film at first, anyway. But over time, she does, she does act nicer to Roddy. See, my problem with her in the film was that, like, she acts like she was the only one screwed over. Uh. But it's like, Roddy wasn't, it wasn't just Roddy screwing you over, you screwed him over too. In fact, you were the first one to do it. Yet, she acts like she was the only one who was screwed over the whole time. Like, nah, bitch, you were fucking him over too. Because the thing is that, as I said, like at the beginning, like, Roddy like literally had nothing to do with Rita's situation, yet she literally pinned, she literally pretended that he was a jewel thief just so she, just so the frog villain could like, just like the frog villain could um, get off her back, and I'm like, that's a bitch thing to do. And then she's surprised when he just he does like something similar to her. I'm like, bitch, you started this whole thing, so you can fuck off. So like, I I I just kind of don't like her character. I'm sorry. Like, and and it seems to me that Roddy's the only one who Roddy was the only one who was trying to make things right between the two. And I'm not saying that he's perfect. He 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 did some stupid things too, but like 
Well, I agree that acts like he was the only one doing it. Now, nah, fam, you, you fucked up too. So, I guess that's one, f that's one negative I don't like about the film. You know, when characters are completely oblivious to their own shortcomings, that's just something that doesn't sit right with me. It just doesn't. I just, no. So, yeah, you could say, I don't like Rita's behavior. I don't like Rita's behavior. I feel like, I feel like the whole blame thing was like a little one-sided. But whatever. Anything else I can say about the negatives? Uh, but again, Rita was like a bitch at the beginning, but she does become better as time goes on, so. So, but yeah, I, I kind of don't like her character. Anything else I can say regarding the, the negatives? Well, I mean, there's a potential toilet humor, but I really don't care. I'm really not, I'm really not, like, adverse to toilet humor, as long as it's done well. If it's not done well, then I will, then I will just, I will just not be happy. But if it's done well, then I don't care. Um, hmm. Uh, hmm. I can't think of anything else, because again, the film is overall solid, it just had a bit of writing issues at the beginning, but other than that, it's... I can't think of very many negatives for this film. I don't know. Uh, well, whatever. I, I, if I don't have enough... Oh! Oh, actually, I can. I can think of one negative. It's it's subjective, but I I am so tired of the goddamn slugs. Like seriously, like they were just annoying to me. At first they were at first, you know, I thought like they were fine, but then they just started showing up everywhere in the movie and I'm just like I'm tired of these guys and and their constant singing didn't help. I'm just like y'all need to shut the fuck up. Y'all are annoying. Shut the fuck up. Like, seriously, like, tone down the... The movie should have just toned down the use of slugs. I just found them... I just got annoyed. I just got tired of them really fast. It's just like, goddamn, you don't need these guys everywhere. Any other negatives you can think of, Thomas? Because I'm struggling to think of any. I do try to watch, like, some reviews before I do these rant streams so that I can, like, have more informed opinions of these movies. But I don't do this with every movie because I don't feel that it's necessary to do that with every movie. But I don't know. I just can't think of very many negatives with this film. It also underperformed at the box office at the time. This movie does secrete. Oh, well, I didn't get a chance to finish reading that because it was deleted. Anyway, this film felt loud and brash, combined with singing songs and even pop culture culture references just thrown in at the last minute. That's a fair point. See, the thing about see, Shrek had like humor where you know the main character did disgusting things, but I feel like Shrek handled that better. I feel like Shrek handled the toilet humor overall better than this movie did. Like with Shrek, like there was, there was, like with Shrek, you know, he's an ogre, they do disgusting things, but it's never like, it's, it's never really in your face about it, but in Flesh the Way it kind of is. So I guess that's, that's one thing that can be off-putting about this film. That's one thing that I found slightly off-putting about this film, but not to the point where I just, where I couldn't enjoy it. Because I feel like Shrek did the whole 
loud, brash, gross in your face kind of thing better. Which is funny because Shrek came out first, so and this is and both movies are from the same company, so just This movie is guilty of doing the cliche of the main characters don't like each other. To be fair, that's not necessarily a bad trope, but the way the trope was, I, I, but yeah, I do, I do agree that the trope here just really wasn't handled all that well, because it goes back to the first point in this list I have, where it's just like there's this constant back and forth between the characters, Rita and Roddy. And even though they both screw each other over, Rita's the only one acting like she didn't do anything wrong. And I'm just like, nah, bitch. Fuck off. And and it's just, yeah, I feel like that could have been written better. I can't think of any other negatives with the film. Along with, except for that and the, the annoying slugs. The slugs don't add anything to the film, in my opinion. They just don't. I feel like they could have... I feel like they could have been... Like they, there are they, there are a few there are a few scenes where they're they're funny, but for the most part, they just really didn't need to be in the film all that much. But that's just me. But really, the film is. Overall solid, I'd say. I can't really think of any other negatives. Um. Hmm. Now let's go to home. 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 Okay, home. Hmm. What do I say about home? Tamman actually doesn't like this movie. <laughs> I actually like this movie. I will say that I actually do like this movie. I like Home. I like Home. Don't burn me at the stake, please. I actually do like this movie. Oh, it's okay, Thomas. Don't worry. But yeah, I actually do like this movie. So, you know, it involves the alien invasion trope, but it actually has a quite a spin on it. So, um... There's this race of aliens called the Boove, and they, they're running away from this other race of aliens called the Gorg, and um, they try to find another area to live while running away from the Gorg, and they find Earth, so they literally force all the humans out, or, uh, out of whatever, like out of certain areas of the world. Like certain cities or whatever, they like literally force the humans out of their homes by sucking them up in these machines or whatever, and then they relocate them elsewhere in the world. And and then the new and then the aliens move in, but one human actually managed to avoid that, and that is one of the characters, one of the main characters of the film. Her name is Tip. She's she's voiced by Rihanna. She's she's a young black girl who's from the Caribbean, Barbados to be specific. Barbados is in the Caribbean, right? So I don't, I don't, I don't fucking remember. Oops, yeah, it's, it's, it's a country in the Caribbean, okay. A six out of 10 movie, that is all. Oh yeah, this movie, it's okay. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I will say that it's not perfect, but I did like it. <laughs> but yeah, like, so the black girl, Tip, is her name. Her Actually, her full name is Gratuity Tucci. I'm not joking. It's Gratuity Tucci. I don't know why. It, it just is. Um, and I forgot what her mom's name was. But... But yeah, like... But yeah, like... The, black, the young black girl's nickname is Tip, so I'll just call her Tip. Tip uh, meets the other main character. Uh, like While trying to avoid the alien invasion, she meets the other main character named O. No, I'm not joking. That's literally his name, O. Like, these names are stupid, I know, but that's, that's literally his name, O. 
O. That's his name. O H. O. His name is O. Because he's that one guy that's just a total killjoy to be around. The one guy that nobody likes. So whenever he shows up, you're just like, oh. That's why. He, that's where he gets his name from. Oh. Oh. So O and Tip, they meet each other. Um, at first, Tip is hostile to O, and for good reason, because his race literally forced the humans out of their homes. But, but you know, Tip, because she's such a great driver, and she... She 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 at one point crashes the fucking car. Earlier she crashes she crashed the fucking car that her her mom's car and she she needs to get it working again and O's like I can help you with that if you if you let me out of the freezer you lock me in I I can help you with that. And so Tip agrees to Tip agrees to let him out and then he fixes the car. He doesn't just fix the car, he primps the ride like he turns it into a hovercraft with slushy machines and everything. Um, and, and, um, and then Tip, and then O begs Tip to let, to let him come, but she's like, no. The agreement was that you'd fix the, that you'd fix the car. And that's it. But then, but then O's like, but I can help you find your mom. But I can lead you there, and then and then she regretfully lets him get on, especially since the 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 alien police were on their tail or whatever. Oh yeah, that's right. So the police are after O because he accidentally sent an invite to his housewarming party to literally everyone in the galaxy, including the Gorg, and the 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 message is like is like being transmitted across space and like. I, be, I believe a day and a half it'll reach some, some like like some, some like 40 hours or whatever like it's gonna reach the gorg in that amount of time so so Boog decides to help Tip head to the to the alien headquarters in Paris or whatever and so along the way they uh well at first Tip is hostile to O but but you know she does bond with him over the journey and he bonds with her and and they have and they have some moments where they they run away from the police and moments where like yeah just 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 you know general action scenes like that just chase scenes in general so they make it to Paris and Boo manages to stop the message from being sent to the Gorg just before it reaches the Gorg. Because plot convenience, who cares? And but and now okay, so now the so now the Gorg aren't aren't going to come to the planets and destroy it. So now all that's left to do is to help Tip find her mom. Uh, who's in Australia. Uh, well, Elf found that out. So, they so they head to Australia. Um, they get there, but unfortunately, the Gorg, the Gorg, uh, find Planet Earth anyway because you know the genius leader of the Boov, Captain Schmeck or whatever Smack, whatever his name, Smack, whatever his name is. He, he, he had stolen a rock. Earlier he's like like very early like like even before the film started like like for some background like he he stole he 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 unknowingly took um something that the gorg wanted when during their last meeting like there was a peace meeting between the boob and the gorg but cap the captain ran away because I guess he was afraid of the gorg and then he stole their rock or whatever without realizing that they will actually the, that's the entire reason they're chasing the Boov anyway, because they just want the rock back. So the gor the Gorg appear in Australia, and then Boov realize Boov Boov helps Tip Tip find her mom. Uh, well, at first he like at first he like runs away with the other Boov to like escape the Gorg, but then he comes back and um helps Tip find her mom and then the Gorgs show up and then 
And then Boof, but just before that, Boof realizes what the Gorg actually wants, so he goes to the Gorg. Um, the ship nearly kills, uh, oh, but, you know, he survives. And he, he gives the rock back to the Gorg, and then they leave. And then, you know, O and Tip, they hug and shit, and then all the humans who are watching the whole thing unfold... They come by and and congratulate uh and then, and then they think congratulate Boof I'm sorry the O oh, sorry O oh, for for um protect for saving the planet from the Gorg and then later in the movie like you know Boo I'm sorry O oh, not Boo I keep calling him Boo O oh, uh is seen having a a party with. Um, the, uh, he both humans and aliens, and he actually still sent out an invitation to, his invitation was still sent out to every, every other place in the galaxy for his housewarming party or whatever, and then, yeah, that's how the movie ends. But yeah, the general theme here is that O is an outcast, just like Tip. They're both outcasts, they both have problems fitting in, so that's how they bond. Um, and yeah, oh yeah, and the humans, like, yeah, they're no longer mad at the boo for, you know, kicking them out of their homes. At first, they were, like, happy that the boo were escaping near the end of the movie to get away from the Gorg, but then, you know, they had a change of hearts later in the film, whatever, it's, it's, it's a family movie, no, no one holds grudges, but, yeah, that's home. It's 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 a plot. <laughs> like I mean the plot works but the plot works it, it could have been I don't know how to describe this. It's like I like it but at the same time it's a little bit what the fuck. You know? <laughs> Yeah, the Sonic movies did do the whole, the main character is sad because he's lonely trope better. I will admit that. But, you know, I didn't think the movie handled that trope badly. It could have handled it a bit better. But it, I don't think it handled the trope badly. Just like, it just wasn't the best, it just wasn't the best use of the trope. But that's okay. Oh, in the original version of Flushed Away, Roddy had two butlers? I guess they- oh, so I guess DreamWorks didn't want- Didn't want to think that Roddy was too spoiled. He's- he's not that spoiled. This also has Jennifer Lopez in it. Yeah, she plays Tip's mom. Rihanna plays Tip. Um, Jennifer Lopez plays Tip's mom. Uh, what else? I forgot who plays, uh, O. I, for, I literally forgot. What was his name? Let me look this up. I literally forgot. Oh, Jim Parsons. I think Jim Parsons, yeah, Jim Parsons was the voice of O. Oh, okay, though this is the same guy from, that plays Sheldon from Big Bang Theory. I literally did not even notice the resemblance in their voices up until now. Oh my god, how am I just now notice how am I just now realizing this? This is embarrassing. How did I not notice? Although to be fair, I don't really watch I don't really watch Big Bang Theory, so And I so I I don't really so I haven't really gotten very many chances to hear that voice. But Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, and Steve Martin plays Captain Schmeck, and that's really all you need to know. Everyone else doesn't matter. Anyway. You still crush on Jennifer Lopez? <laughs> Alice? Uh, let's see.
Yeah, the slugs and flush away do feel like just a cheap version of the minions, right? They do. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, these these feel like the slugs feel like like they feel like a cheap version of the rabbits from the Raymond series or like the the minions from the Despicable Me series. They feel like they feel like cheap knockoff versions of those. Even though they technically existed beforehand, I think. And it seems that they were they were created to pander to the to younger audiences, but yeah, clearly those slugs just weren't working out for the film. Sorry. The weird thing is that the butlers were actually in the video game tying the flesh away, but only in the tutorial level. I never even played the game. So I wouldn't know, but that's interesting. Yeah, it's not it doesn't surprise me though, because yeah, video games like that might they might end up having elements that are scrapped from the movies. I even mentioned this in my Shrek live uh, rant stream where there was there was a deleted scene in the original Shrek the Third movie where Ar Shrek was going to like have Artie fight a, a fake dragon who's just who was just puss and donkey in disguise, and then Artie ended up fighting a real dragon. That that deleted scene idea actually made it into the mo the video game Shrek the Third. It actually made it into that game. Where again, Artie... But it's just Donkey and the dragon disguised this time. But Artie does end up finding a dragon. So, just like in the deleted scene. So, yeah, it's not surprising for video game... Movie-based video games to have scrapped ideas like that. But, anyway... Um, hmm... Anything else? Oh, right. I forgot. Okay, so yeah, the mo that's the that's the plot of Home. I watched it. I, I do remember watching this one in theaters when it came out. Like shortly after it came out, I watched it in theaters with with my cousin Stephanie and her sisters. I liked it, and then I went and rewatched it today. I still liked it. I think it's. I I, I don't think it's as bad as as people say it is. Although I do agree that it's not the greatest. Okay, pause this. All right. The animation is great, actually. I'd say it's great. I, I love the animation. I love the animation. I love the art style. I like, I like, I like how everything looks. Everything's just so colorful and vivid and detailed. I like, I like how the movie looks. It looks good. I like how the aliens look. I like how the humans look. I like how the environments look. I like how everything looks. I think the art style is great. I love it. So the animation is definitely good. And for those of you who may not be fans of the art style, well, at least it's serviceable, right? But I do like the art style. I think I think it's actually good. Not the greatest art style I've seen, but still quite good. Oh, you 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 watch this on Redbox? Ha! <laughs> That's what I did with Sponge on the Run. <laughs> But yeah. Okay. Uh, the plot. The plot. Okay. Uh, hmm. The plots. Hmm. Okay. Well. I mean, how do I describe this? Because because I have mixed feelings on the plot. Like, I thought the setup was interesting. Uh huh. Let's. I'm trying to think. Uh. Hmm. I guess you could say I like the plot, but the execution could have been better? I guess you. I guess that's possible? 
You red boxed Sponge out of water? Oh, okay. So you watched that movie before watching Home. Interesting. Sponge out of water I just bought from Amazon. I was like, oh, I'll just buy it from Amazon. So, yeah. But, uh, anything else regarding the positives? Oh, right, the plot. Um, I like the plot. I mean, I, I think, I think the... I mean, I thought the idea itself was fine, at least, you know. Animals, and like, alien, I'm sorry, aliens invading Earth. And then, and then, you know, humans, and then, you know, aliens invading Earth and then causing problems for humans. I mean, that trope's been done a lot, but I think they put, they had a unique spin on it to where it's like, where the aliens aren't, like, trying to hurt the humans or anything. They're, they just... Like they just they all they just wanted to do was live somewhere else. Doesn't excuse their actions, obviously, and the film does make that very clear. But the aliens weren't trying to hurt anyone. So Yeah. I mean, but I did like the plot and I also liked um I did like that I did like, you know, the whole all the bonding that Tip and O did. Like, I thought they made a. I thought they made a decent pair. I thought they had some chemistry. Um, certainly more chemistry than Boog and Elliot from the open season movies. I'm sorry, I just can't help but trash open season every chance I get because it's just so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> But, but I did like the plot. Okay, uh, anything else? I liked the music. There were a few songs from Rihanna in there, or was it just one? I can't remember. It was at least one. I know that only girl in the world was in the, in the, uh, movie. But I, I'm not sure if that was the only one from Rihanna. Anyway, but yeah, I did like the music. Like, the music that played during the action scenes was good, and, and I did like the, the pop tracks that were used. So, so yeah. Oh, I like the humor. I actually, I actually like the humor. I think this movie's funny. I will, I will say that, like, it's not the funniest movie I've ever seen, but I thought it was, I thought it was decently funny. I thought it was decently funny. Um, hmm, I'm trying to think. Oh yeah, well yeah, there were there were moment there were several moments in the movie that made me laugh, like Boog dancing. Not Boog. I'm sorry. Oh oh, dancing for the first time. That was funny. Because he 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 didn't know he didn't know what dancing was. And but he was just dancing really, <laughs> like he was just dancing like a pro. It was funny to watch. And he's like, "What's happening with my body?" Because you know he he hadn't danced before, so that was funny. Um, and there are other funny movie well, moments in the movie like that, like when Boog is type. I keep calling him Boog. Oh, when O is typing his password so that he could like cancel the email or whatever he's like i don't get it that's like and he had a really long password too that was funny they but the, but he types it in and he's like wait i don't get it it should have worked and then he's like oh caps lock <laughs> that part made me laugh i'm like dude seriously so he took the, so he takes the caps lock off and then he types in the password and and fortunately manages to stop the email in time just before it reached the gork that was funny <laughs> But, yeah. 
Uh, so let's see. Humor, plot, music, animation. I think that's it. I think that's it. Uh, negatives. 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 <laughs> right? Like, yeah, the movie does just forget about the main leader. It kind of just forgets about him. Now, I, for I, I, I didn't mention this earlier because I didn't want to point out every single plot point that this movie had. But, yeah, like, when Boog, like, I keep calling him that. When O, when O, um, so while the aliens are, like, running away from the Gorg yet again, like, you know, because they, they had just left Earth. So while they were running away... Uh, um, uh, like the Gorg, the Korg, like, the Gorg was chasing after them, but, oh, um, used some ch super chip that he, that he, uh, that he had stolen from from the Gorg, from one of their drone ships or whatever, to, and he used it as like some sort of jet propulsion device to help the ship get away from the Gorg faster. And then everyone's like, wow, oh, holy crap, you actually saved us. You actually face the danger head on instead of running away. Because that's what Boo do. They just run away from danger. They don't actually try to fight anyone or anything. They just run away from danger. So, but yeah, everyone's like, oh, it's amazing. But then the leader's like, oh, please. Oh, it's the reason why we're in this mess in the first place. But then, oh, you know, calls out the leader for being a bad leader, which he was. He was a bad leader. And then, and then the, there's this there's this other alien character his name's Kyle he he um he he was like a police officer whatever traffic cop whatever he comes in and de and actually just dethrones the leader himself leader the captain smack like he just outright dethrones him and makes O the leader instead which is which is fine I guess like it's it's fine. I don't think there's. I mean, oh, oh would have made a good leader, in my opinion, despite the fact that he that he's a constant screw up. But, but, but Captain Schmeck was just like he he was kind of forgotten at the end. Although you do see him like there's just one shot of him like, like at the end during the final scene where he's. DJing a dance party on a different planet that's very on the moon sorry that's on the moon with other aliens so I mean so yeah he's just but yeah other than that he he's basically just kind of pushed aside which I actually wasn't a fan of but only slightly like it slightly bothered me but yeah. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure. Like, I don't, I don't think I'll put down the list, though, because I feel like, because, like, that's just very, very, in my opinion, like, that's just, I feel like that's just a very, very minor point, and I, I don't know if I want to put that in there, unless I have nothing else to put in the, on the list, but I'm trying to think. What else, what else does this movie do that's, Oh, my cousin texted me. What is this? No. Why are you sending me these? I'm not buying you something else. Forget it.
whatever. Anyway, um, I'm trying to. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Like, oh, my PC is terrible. I'm just I'm gonna try to like. I'm gonna try to like. I will try my hardest to. Um, I'll try my hardest to get a new computer. Or see if I can trade this one in, because I'm just tired of this. But anyway, um. I forgot to mention, the aliens in this movie speak, well, mostly Boo. Uh, oh, oh, I keep calling them Boo. Mostly O. Oh. I guess, I guess my brain just doesn't like how stupid his name is, so I get, I just give him a name that makes a bit more sense. But O, oh, see, he speaks really, really bad English. So, like, not, not, like, so bad that even foreigners would cringe. That even experienced foreigners with the English language would cringe at his at his at his at his lang at his use of the English language. So basically, like just just having just just generally weird syntax and phrasing, misusing verbs and prepositions and shit like that, which is fine. Like I didn't I like I've actually found his his style of speaking funny. Though I found it weird how he was like, like even though all the aliens have gr make grammatical mistakes with English, he O just makes the most for whatever reason. The others sound almost normal, but he just sounds really weird in comparison. I really don't know why they, I don't know why they didn't keep it consistent. Because Captain Smeg sounds almost normal, but but O it just sounds really, really weird. I, I don't know why they didn't keep that, the quality of English, uh among the aliens consistent. I don't know why they didn't bother doing that, but whatever. I, there is one, there is one negative I can think of, one that, actually two, probably, screw your PC, screw my PC too. I mean, honestly, I just, see, the thing is that I would have, I would have, like, tried to get a different PC by now, but, you know, that, that's, that take, that takes time. And, you know, as, you know, me, I'm just busy making all these streams and whatnot. So it's like, so it's like I could go and try to get this fixed, but then that'll just get in the way of, <laughs> of you know, making streams and videos and whatnot. So I just put up with it until I just make it, until I just set some time aside to go and take care of that shit. But yeah, I think after next week, I'm just gonna go and try to just, just try to fucking fix this thing. Despite having it taken to the technician, like, what, four times already? Three, four times? But, whatever. Negatives. There is one negative I can think of. So, Rihanna... I don't mean to slam her, but... She was not a good choice for... For the character tip. She, she really shouldn't be voicing young girls, especially since she's had a history of smoking. I'm sorry, but Rihanna should not have been the voice of this girl. She just shouldn't have it. Like, I don't know why they, why they, why they let her do it. Like, just, I mean, yeah, I get it. Like, she, she, you know, some, a few of her songs are in the fucking movie, but like, fam, just because she, just because people like your singing doesn't mean they like your acting. Because singing and acting are two different things. Rihanna's acting wasn't bad, but... But... 
Like, it was decent, but her voice just, no. Just, no. It just, no. It, it does not fit the character. It didn't fit the character. I'm just looking through I'm just looking through a few reviews here because I don't know the thing is that I like the movie but I'm trying to find negatives for it it's because I know that some people don't like it It made one hundred seventy-seven point three million dollars in the box office. On Rotten Tomatoes, it has a score of fifty-two percent. I don't care about Jennifer Lopez. Okay, let's see here. Oh, here. Let me look at this reviewer's review. review. I feel like, I guess you could say that, I guess you could say that the, the connection, I did say that, like, I did say that I liked the, the relationship between Tip and O, but I feel like it was a bit forced. I don't know, I, I don't know, it's hard to describe, but I feel like it didn't progress in a natural manner. It's it's hard to explain. I don't know. Like, I feel like I feel like it could have been handled a bit better, or maybe that's maybe that's not the right way to describe it. I don't know. But here, actually, hold on. Let me see. Let me see. I don't know. I just feel like... <sighs> Damn. I'm trying to think.
I don't fucking know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe... Hmm. Damn. This is like... I, I don't know why I'm struggling to think of... I guess I just like the movie that much. I don't know. Huh. Well, whatever. Okay. <sighs> hmm. Screw it. That's the only thing I can think of. I don't know. I just don't know. Screw it. That's okay. All right. Well, I'll come back to it later. If I if I think of anything. Okay. So. So co general comments. Okay. So what were the movies? Okay. So. The B movie is the worst out of all of them. The worst movie out of all of them. It just sucks. The best one? Eh. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, ratings. What are my ratings for these movies? Uh, I guess you could say... I guess you could say... Hmm. Over the Hedge. I give that one a 7 out of 10. Flushed Away. No, I guess this can be a 7.5. Flushed Away can be a. S and. Uh, oh, sorry. 7 out of 10. B Movie gets a fucking. Oh, sorry. B Movie gets. Five out of ten. Four and a half out of ten. I don't like it. Home to me gets Yeah, six out of ten. I guess that's how I that's how I'd say. I do remember include it including some pop songs that didn't really fit. I guess that's another thing. Like the music selection I I like the songs, but like, yeah, the music selection could have been better. It could have been a bit better. Like only girl in the world. That 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 song select that song didn't really fit the film. Like it it was used in the scene where uh O is trying to like. Like Chip's trying to help Elle put on the, on the put on a disguise. Like she uses she she tries to use makeup on him. I mean I, that song kind of doesn't fit that scene. But but uh, and I'm sure there are other examples, but that's the only one I can think of at the moment. I'm sorry. I'm trying to think of diff more more negatives but for some reason I just can't I just can't <laughs> I just can't uh damn <laughs> well one 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 complaint that I see I've seen from these reviews oh the main leader the thing about him is that he he just he just became one of, he just became an ordinary citizen you even you can even as I said earlier, like you even see him DJing at a at a dance party on the moon, with other aliens. Like, so, but yeah, like, it's just weird how he was just dethroned like that and then almost never brought up again. But, and even in the credits seek the the credit sequence, he is in, he is in a picture, with, with O and Tip and Tip's mom and. Kyle the the traffic cop so the movie didn't forget about him but at the same time it, it just hardly made any references to him yeah I feel like the movie should have used him a bit more after that point like maybe have it to where he realizes the error of his ways and then he 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 helps O 
return the the rock to to the gorg. I feel like that probably would have been a good use of his character. So I guess that's one that's one negative. Oh damn, on the on the website Roger ebert.com this has like a two this has like two stars out of five oh and another complaint that people have with this plot is that it's Apparently, it's very similar to Lilo and Stitch, which I didn't realize because I haven't watched the real the original Lilo and Stitch movie in who knows how many years. So I didn't notice the similarities there. Oh yeah, and the character, the main character Tip has a cat named Pig for some reason. I don't fucking know. The names in this, the names in this movie are stupid, but... Anyway, let me go and type that in. <sighs> Anything else? Yeah, that's all I that's all I have. I can't think of anything else to say. <laughs> Although I do have to wonder, actually that's another thing. Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer Lopez was in the movie. But she barely had any lines. Like, why? Like, it's just weird how she voiced a character who had very few lines. Compared to Rihanna, who voiced one of the main characters. Like, shouldn't they, shouldn't they both have gotten a, no, a number of lines? Like, a lot of, more line, like, lots of lines, but... No, it's just Rihanna for some reason. I don't know. Ow, fucking... Sorry.
Hmm. Well, I don't have anything else to say. Because, like, there are, like, some people, like, most of the reviews for this are positive, so, more or less, but, yeah, anyway. Oh, yeah, I forgot, Jennifer Lopez was barely in this movie, right? I was too busy simping over her a while ago that I forgot she's hardly in the movie. Yeah, that's, I don't have anything else to say. Maybe there are more complaints about the, about the movie, but I can't really think of any right now. But overall, this was an okay movie. Yeah, exactly. Home was overall okay. It was it was all right. It's it could have been better, but it was all right. And it, it's it's not particularly original because again, Lilo and Stitch kind of did the same thing. But that's okay because Home went and took that plot and just did and just put a spin on it, and that's fine. Like again, stories have been borrowing shit from each other for who knows how long so it's okay if not everything is original in the story and i kind of don't like the idea that i, I kind of don't like the i feel like the word generic is being tossed around a little too much in movie for movies nowadays it's okay for movies to share elements it's okay as long as they're unique enough then it's fine i mean i say it has similarities to shrek nobody actually some actually some people have complained about that but Really, for the most part, nobody cares. And like, and there are other examples, like The Lion King is pretty much Hamlet, nobody cares, and so on and so forth. So like, it's okay for stories to have similarities. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. And there are other examples I could think of, but you guys get the idea. But yeah, that's how I would. I won't give my ratings to say perfectly match yours. A eh? okay, let's go. <laughs> but yeah, like that's really yeah, that's the thing. I'm sorry, like that <laughs> that there was a lot of silence, but I just couldn't think of anything else to say. <laughs> but yeah, um, the B movie sucks. Home is okay, and Flushed Away and Over the Hedge are good. So. I like Over the Hedge more than Flushed Away, but they're all good. Uh, well, well, uh, oh, bo both, I mean, Over the Hedge and Flushed Away. The other two, yeah. <sighs> so, but yeah, that's all I have to say. Over the Hedge for me gets a 7.5 out of 10. Flushed Away gets a 7 out of 10. The B-Movie gets a 4.5 out of 10. And Home gets a 6 out of 10. So, but yeah, that's the end of that. Oh, I can't wait to I can't wait for the next rant stream because I'm gonna talk about Rise of the Guardians, Mega Mind, the bad guys. I can't wow that one in particular I'm looking forward to. And there was another one. Monsters vs. Aliens, yeah. So I can't wait for those. I think I'll just I think I'll just save that for next week. And the Toy Story movies as well. I have Disney Plus so I can just watch all the Toy Story movies there, including Lightyear. Which I am afraid to watch, but why not? If I'm gonna, if I'm going to cover the Toy Story movies, I might as well cover Lightyear. I might as well. I think next time I have a rant, I'm gonna try to have like a. I'm gonna try to have like these outlines typed in advance because if instead of just typing them as I go, because I don't want to like have moments of dead silence. That I'm sorry, silence. That dead silence makes no sense because like silence is like just dead dialogue by definition. But whatever. But yeah, like I don't want to have moments of long moments of silence or whatever. But really, I just, like, with Home, I just had a hard time thinking of negatives because I, just, I guess I just really liked the movie. But, yeah. That's the end of that. I, I didn't have much to say about these movies in general. I'm sorry. Like, normally I have a lot to say on, 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 on like, movies. Like, on Despicable, Despicable Meme series, I had a lot to say. 
I have a lot to say on those, but about those, but with these, it's just like. But with these, I didn't have much to say about these, except for, like, the first two I had a lot to say, but the second two, just, no. I don't know why. <laughs> but, yeah, that's that's that. But thank you all so much for, I guess I'll just end the rant stream here. But thank you all so much for watching. This was fun. Next week, we shall do four more DreamWorks movies and then the Toy Story movies, and I think I'll stop there. Yeah, I think I'll just stop there. But anyway, see you guys next time. Until then, deuces and goodbye.